I'm John Schroeder. I'm the CEO and co-founder of MapR Technologies. Um, MapR is really pleased to make a couple of announcements today at the Hadoop Summit. Uh, the first is the announcement of our, of our product availability. And uh, the second is our Strategic Partner Alliance Program announcement. Now, uh, uh, we have made a couple of uh, other announcements over the last uh, four or five weeks, including a strategic partnership with EMC and also our corporate contributor agreement uh, with Apache Org. And we're excited about those announcements as well. But in addition to those recent announcements, we've actually been in business for over two years. And we've been executing on a, a very well-funded and aggressive engineering project that results in a, uh, a number of innovations around uh, making it easier to uh, build, deploy, and manage Hadoop applications, uh, provide a, uh, a very reliable compute and storage platform for those applications, and then also a, a number of performance enhancements that, as well that are pretty dramatic. Um, now, uh, we are going to show some product detail and some demos, but before I get into that, we did put together a, a product announcement video. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, primarily, uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, also be able to hear from a number of our customers and partners in that video talking about their experiences uh, using the MapR uh, technology product. Introducing MapR, significant technical breakthroughs, major new functionality, crucial architectural advances. The next generation distribution, building on the great work conducted by the Apache Hadoop community. MapR is easy, dependable, and fast. So what we're excited about with MapR is the innovation around sort of enterprise grade Hadoop platform and making it easy to install, easy to manage, making sure that it sort of performs optimally, that it's robust, and that the IT staff who need to deploy, manage, provision, increase the size of, introduce other clusters, can do that in a very easy and reliable fashion. So with MapR, it's very easy to get existing data inside into your cluster. Using the NFS tools, you can mount your cluster as an NFS point. You can use your standard tools to get data in and out. Started doing the uh, the MapR beta within Comscore. You know, there were some questions within the development team, within the admin team. Is this how this is going to work? Is it going to work well? And it's amazing. All you know, the developers come back saying. We love working, we'd rather work on the MapR instance. We, the, the admin team loves it because it just easily integrates with all their standard items. Those things, you know, the user community like, prefers to work on the MapR distribution versus the standard distribution at this time. So it definitely, it's important to think about disaster recovery and data protection in a Hadoop environment. You never know when you're going to get that 3 a.m. page. Oh no, the name node has gone down. We've lost, not only are we offline, we've lost our data as well. Have the backups been running? Do they still work? Do we know? You know you're not going to go to bed for the next 24 hours. MapR has built into design an automated DR strategy. So we can leverage the needs of the business to have our Hadoop instance supporting a, a standard DR capacity. Well, with MapR, you know, you have the no single point of failure name nodes. Any machine going down, no matter which node it is, you're good to go. And with the snapshot functionality, and you can use snapshots to provide your backups, to provide your point in time backups. You know, oh, a developer accidentally deleted the entire directory. Whoops. You know, there's, you know, backups are really tough. And especially when you're trying to back up, you know, I don't know, 200 terabytes or something like that. You just can't really stream that off to tape anymore. Tapes just don't work. You need to have point in time snapshots. We feel like better utilization of hardware is the next phase of development for Hadoop, and it's going to be an important one to improve customer value. And we're excited to see companies like MapR really investing in better performance for Hadoop. Uh, performance with MapR has been incredible. I've been running two clusters and comparing the performance of vanilla Hadoop with the MapR stack across a number of jobs. Um, and I've been able to demonstrate significant performance improvement across all the releases that we've had so far. But the, the MapR stack has been consistently uh, outperforming the vanilla stack and 
and uh, by significant integer values. So with MAPAR, you will see at least three times performance. I personally saw six to seven times performance on my own hardware. MAPAR is the most real-time cluster that I've been able to evaluate and the results that I've been able to see uh, operating on the data that I've had uh, suggest that it's really the best candidate for, for our use. Um, it has the NFS mount ability, which lets us easily plug into our existing file-based infrastructures. It has the management and high availability facilities that are uh, key to managing large data sets in general. And the performance, uh, well, it speaks for itself. We get the data out, we get the answers back uh, faster, much faster than we do with the vanilla stack. So I see MapR as the perfect Hadoop distribution for the enterprise. It solves a lot of the core issues that companies will need to address to integrate Hadoop into their complex. If you want to run HBase in a real-time environment back in website, you need to seriously look at MapR. It will provide the HA and the performance you'll need to deliver your website. We really appreciate uh, all the organizations that helped us with the product. Uh, we had 35 companies in our uh, beta program when we were installed at uh, uh, beta accounts as early as November of last year, and that uh, really added a lot of value to uh, both getting the feature set right and also exposing the technology to a broad range of environments and different types of application mixes. Um, so what is the MapR uh, Technologies product? It's a distribution for running Hadoop applications. It, it is very complete, includes everything from the MapReduce and storage layer up through HBase, uh, HivePig, uh, Zookeeper, all the important packages you need. 100% uh, plug and play compatible, so you can run your Hadoop applications on MapR without even recompiling. Um, and it runs on commodity hardware. We've integrated the, the latest patches and fixes, integrated that, and we provide support on the entire distribution. Now, this is a technical conference. We want to show some uh, demos of the product. I'd like to invent or invite. Uh, Tomer Sharan up on stage, he's our director of product management. And it really wasn't practical in a very short 15 minute period to bring a live cluster up on stage. So Tomer's put together a few uh, simple workflows through the product that will be able to give you a little bit of feel for what it's like to work with the technology. Uh, where we've really focused the innovations is around ease of use, uh, dependability, and around application speed. And we'll start out talking about the MapR control system. And the control system is a graphical interface we built for managing the cluster. It's where you uh, do the cluster administration. You can do health monitoring, resolve any issues within the cluster, and then also provision applications. So through this interface, you'd uh, define how much compute and storage resources is required for an application, security authorizations, and also data protection and business continuity rules. So, uh, Tomer, what have you uh, put together to show us with regards to the control system? Well, yeah, well the MapR control system, I mean, it, it does so much. But in this, in, th in this demo, I want to focus on, on a very simple example. Um, I'll show you how the, the heat map can show you a, a simple problem in the cluster and how we can actually resolve it very easily all through the user interface. Over here is our, uh, our heat map. And each square represents a single node in the cluster. So green squares are, are healthy. And the red square means there's a problem. So if we click on it, we can actually see the node page. And immediately you see the, the alarm for the task tracker down is raised. And if we go in and we click on, on task tracker, we can restart the task tracker directly from the user interface. So we didn't have to SSH that node or do anything. You know, it immediately popped up. And we can actually resolve it in a second. And now you'll see if we go back to the heat map, um, you'll see that everything is green. And we've resolved the problem. Now, this heat map has over 20 different views, as you can see. And there's just so much you can do. You can look at CPU utilization. You can look at general health of the nodes. Um, there's many, many statistics you can look at. And it really makes it much, much easier to, to, to administer your Hadoop cluster. Oh, cool. So now do you have to manage everything through the GUI interface when you manage the MapR cluster? No, actually, everything in the MapR control system, the heat map and everything else, is available both through a REST API and through a CLI. So, so you can use scripts and, and you know, access it that way as well. OK, next area is uh, direct access NFS. And so what we did is allow, or we built an architecture that allows you to mount directly to your cluster, the same cluster you're running your uh, Hadoop jobs on. And that allows uh, application servers to write directly into the cluster. You can access results as they're being built. And all your standard file-based applications, commands, file browsers all work against that same data. So uh, 
I think Tomer's put together something on uh, NFS as well. Yeah, what, what I wanted to show was uh, a very simple example just to demonstrate this. And so in this example, I've downloaded a tarball from, from the internet. It has about 100 books in it, text files. And we're going to copy that tarball onto the cluster, double click it through, through the Mac Finder, uh, untar the file, and then we're going to run a simple MapReduce job on, uh, um, on those files. And you'll see how much easier uh, NFS makes, makes, Hadoop, uh, makes Hadoop from now on. OK, fingers crossed. We'll see if we can do it right this time. There we go. Great. So this is, this is my laptop. You can see the books tarball. And what you're seeing now is actually the, the cluster. So you can see the, I'm navigating the cluster through Mac Finder. And I can just browse the directories and do all the things you'd expect. So now what I'm going to do is drag and drop the, the books tarball into the cluster. So all I had to do was drag it, and, and it's in the cluster now. And so as you can see, this is much easier than, than going in and using special Hadoop uh, FS put tools and things like that. And I can just double click the file. So file associations, <laughs> they work. In this case, it's untarring the file. Imagine a MapReduce job generating a CSV file. You could double click it. It opens in Excel. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, Hadoop becomes so much easier to, to access your data um, and, and interact with it. And so you can see we finished uh, untarring the, the, the file. And we see the books directory. And I can go in and, and Indeed, my 100 books are, are inside the cluster. So now let's see how NFS even makes uh, CLI, or the command line, much easier. So we launch terminal here, and we're going to run a simple word count on, on these books and, and count the occurrences of books. So I can drag and drop from Finder onto the terminal. It makes it much easier to type the path. Uh, I can also use auto completion now. So for the first time, you can actually hit tab, and, and tab just works like it does in, in any other environment. So again, things becoming a lot easier. And immediately, the output is available. And in fact, the output is available while, while the data is being created, so while the MapReduce job is running. And you can run tail and see the output, how it's being created, and, and cancel the job if you want. So it's, it's, it's just so much easier. So, uh, so you, do you need to install any special software on a client to be able to mount the cluster via NFS? No, actually, that's, that's the beauty of this, is this is a standard and complete NFS uh, interface. It works on Mac. It works on Windows. It works on Linux. It, it, you know, no installation on the client, nothing. Oh, so basically a standard, complete implementation of the NFS protocol then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, next area we addressed is uh, around uh, really dependability. So uh, we did build a high availability architecture. So for uh, important components like the job tracker and name node, we provide uh, the ability to do automated and stateful failover. So if the node housing one of those important components would have a failure, will automatically and statefully fail over, jobs continue to execute. There's no manual recovery required. Additionally, with the name node, we've uh, implemented that as a distributed name node and increased the scale with regards to the number of files you can create within a cluster and also a lot of the performance around file create and lookup. Um, now, in addition to uh, working on that high availability architecture, we've also addressed data protection. So, of course, we have replication, like uh, all uh, Hadoop distributions, but we've also introduced a, a technology called snapshots. And what snapshots allow you to do is take snapshots of your data, point-in-time snapshots, very frequently throughout the day. And snapshots are very uh, high performance, low overhead. You can take them on a very, very uh, short time interval. And then if you have an application error or a user error or some data is deleted or left in an inconsistent or corrupted state, it's very simple to go back into a snapshot directory and copy that back into the current directory and get back to a consistent point of data. So Tomer, I think you've got a workflow on uh, snapshots, right? Yeah, I, I want to show you how easy it is as an administrator to set up your snapshot schedule, your snapshot policy, and then as a user, how you can actually recover it. So in this example, uh, what we'll do is we'll set up the, uh, the snapshot schedule so we can start snapshotting the, the books uh, data that we actually just copied into the cluster. And then we're going to see how we can actually recover it. So I'll, I'll go ahead and delete the, the books directory and then recover it from a snapshot. So this will kind of demonstrate how easy it is. So what you see here is a, a snapshot schedule. We come with three snapshot schedules, but you can add as many as you want. So for example, a snapshot schedule says snapshot every hour and keep those around for 24 hours, and then snapshot um, the daily snapshot, keep that around for, for two days, and so forth. So if we go into the volume containing the data, we call this a volume containing the data and for the books that we just copied, we can set the snapshot schedule to a, a, to a schedule called critical data. And from this point on, that data is being snapshotted on a regular basis. So this time, we're using Windows. And I'm going through Windows Explorer again over NFS. And I'm going to go into that uh, directory and actually just go ahead and delete the books directory. So this is a, an example of a typical user error. You know, A lot of companies, uh, including the presenters here, have lost data in Hadoop because of user errors and, or application data corruption. 
So we've deleted that, and now we go into the dot snapshot hidden directory, and you see all your snapshots. Each snapshot is simply a directory. And if I go in, I see the books directory because it was available at that point in time where the snapshot was created. I can go in, right click, copy, go back to the current active directory, and just paste the, the files. And you know, it's as easy as that. All your data is back, and no overhead in both in performance or in storage cost. It's, it's really easy. So it seems, it seems pretty easy. So with this sort of a backup uh, technology snapshot, do you, you have to go back to administrator to get data restored, or can users self-service as well? Oh, actually, that's, that's what's so nice here is the, the user can actually go in on their own, and you know, if they have the, the right file permissions, of course, they go into the dot snapshot, that hidden directory, and they recover their own data. So they're not calling an administrator or anything. They, they just go in. And in fact, that's what we did here with Windows Explorer. You know, just through Windows, we went in, copied it, and, and it was back. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Domer. Um, the other area we addressed is really application speed. And through benchmarks we've run in our lab, and we've run a broad variety of bench benchmarks, Terrasort, DFSIO, YCSB, PigMix, GridMix, NameNode Bench, uh, consistently over the last uh, couple of years. And then the feedback from our, our beta organizations as well make us feel very confident that we should be able to speed uh, your uh, Hadoop applications by a factor of, of two. And here's a couple of uh, uh, benchmarks from our lab. Uh, the one on the left is an H-based benchmark called YCSB. It's measuring throughput in the form of records, record inserts per second. So you want a, a faster uh, uh, throughput number there. So you can see the map bar, uh, bar is uh, quite a bit higher than uh, the other distributions out there. On the right, it's TerraSort, where you're sorting a, a uh, uh, you're sorting a set of data. You want a shorter elapsed time, so you want a shorter bar there. You see map bar is, is a faster elapsed time than the other distributions. Um, and then what that speed means to you is you can either get faster you know, analytic results or you could, you could analyze larger data sets. But really, also, you can save a lot of money just by reducing the amount of compute resource and nodes required to run your Hadoop applications. Now, what we're announcing today are really two editions of our product. Uh, the M5 edition is all the features that we talked about today. It's available on a subscription basis, includes the control system, NFS, the performance enhancements, high availability, snapshots, mirroring. We also provide 24 by 7 support on that. But we're also announcing an M3 edition today, and that includes the control system, that's the graphical interface, NFS access, all the performance enhancements. And that's available to run on an unlimited number of nodes in production for as long as you'd like, totally free of charge. So two editions of our product, M3 and M5. Uh, 